Hello and welcome to Why Are We Talking About Rabbits. My name's John. Here's founder of First Things Foundation. This is our podcast where we, I don't know, try to uh, attend to this feeling of deep dislocation. New world, old world stuff. Talk about history, philosophy, psychology, and try to make sense of big ideas that get very little time on the interwebs. This episode is a conversation about marriage, and it is the result of my head popping off while trying to listen to Matt Walsh, a conservative commentator on something like the Daily Wire, make sense of marriage for Joe Rogan, a libertarian guy who, I don't know, maybe the biggest podcaster there is. The marriage conversation with Joe Walsh. No, Joe Walsh is a singer. I think he might be dead. Is he dead? And by the way, Happy New Year to you guys. Blessed Nativity, Happy New Year. And here we go talking about marriage. So I told you my head popped off because, I don't know, Matt Walsh was talking to Joe Rogan. I know it's old. If you're an internet person, this is like, really, John? Now you're doing this? It's like seven years later. Only in internet years. Only in internet years. In reality, when you have, I don't know, like a family or something and it's the holidays, you go, oh, look what I found. Very much after it was already hot. I'm not saying I'm hot. I'm just saying that, well, I'm definitely not hot in that sense. Really, any sense. Okay, first let's listen, okay, to some of the conversation. It's on Spotify. You can find it. We'll link it. Uh, Joe Rogan, libertarian, scion of, I don't know, interweb stuff, is sitting down with Matt Walsh, who does the woman, what is a woman uh, video, which is, was kind of hot. Speaking of hot. So here's the Holy Grail. I think if I don't do this clip, then, well, I don't, I don't think we can make sense of anything. So I'm going to start with this clip. I just want you to listen to it for a second. So here we go. Right. But what bothers people is that religious ideology will be imposed upon them in that sense. And that the only reason why people would oppose it in a different way than they were opposing heterosexual people that have no intention of having children is because they have an opposition to homosexuality based on religious beliefs, which they feel like should be excluded. And I feel like should be excluded from law. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think that the question of the definition of marriage is a question of religious ideology. Oh man. Oh man. That's what my little daughter used to say. Oh man. Because I think she was like, oh, man, Papa's going to start talking. Yeah. Who can see what's going on here? Who can see why someone who likes Watar or someone like me who's talking in this way, using this old world, new world, why is my head popping off? Because, fill in the blank quickly, because I'm about to, religion. Religion. Uncle Seth was on a couple weeks ago. Uncle Seth, man, you got your people do not understand. You're using a chassis of thought, a foundational epistemological premise. And it's this thing, religion. Matt Walsh, he does this thing where he says something about marriage. He just did it. Marriage is not really a religious conversation, but sexual morality is a religious idea. And if you, voila le, le new world. Voila. And there it is. There's the voice right there. There it is. This dude who generally does a nice job of showing outrage about culture and the demise of America, Matt Walsh, is knee deep in new world enlightenment thinking. He is of this type of thinking. And why wouldn't he be? Why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't any of us be? We live here in this epic, this epoch. But I'm telling you, we can't help it, but I want I want you to hear it. Uh, humans, dear Matt, humans, if there is a God and they are made in the image of it and they are something like God, of God, derived from God, then humans are always nonstop, without choice, day by day, moment by moment. They're always doing religious things. 
they're always making meaning. Humans are meaning making machines. Humans, not dogs. Dogs are nice. Humans, not wheat. Wheat is not doing what we're doing. Humans, all of us, we make meaning out of everything. And that meaning making inclination is what makes us human. It's why we are not wheat. I'm not wheat. I'm not sorghum. I'm a human because everything I see, everything I process is a constant attempt to prioritize things from something like a little bit of meaning to a lot of bit of meaning. Right? This meaning making inclination is what makes us human. And yes, I know. Now I can hear the biologists or their biologists out there. Raise your hand. Mr. and Mrs. Biologist. But 99% of your DNA is the same as some other sh that goes around, like monkeys and squash. Yeah, I know. My DNA is a lot connected. I get it. But it doesn't matter. We humans, we have a different contour to existence. We have a different form, a different nature. All the DNAs we share do not matter in terms of our existential reality, the experience of us humans. We make meaning. We are the highest of all the meaning-making machines. If you don't like the word machines, of all the meaning-making beings, it's us. We make meaning uh, like ants make hills. And this meaning-making is what the old world, folks from the old world, pre-enlightenment, would just call religion. Religion. And then comes the enlightenment. And suddenly after Bacon and Locke and our boy Jefferson, making meaning, deriving meaning from the world around us, that, that meaning becomes bifurcated. The derivation, how we derive meaning becomes bifurcated, it becomes two things, it becomes forked, deucey, doubled. Making meaning during the enlightenment became something like science. It became doing science. So you could make meaning doing science, and that was set up against doing God stuff. Suddenly, we were being taught, and we are being taught here in this society, that science meaning is better than religious meaning. It's truer. It's closer to real. It's objective. And also, it's in the water. Listen to big Joe Rogan. A dyed-in-the-wool libertarian, Joe Rogan, Ayn Rand kind of guy. Listen to what he says. I just don't see how a gay marriage in any way damages a straight marriage. I don't, I don't see it at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems to me that people want to be... Look, if you, if you wanted to look at logic especially in our modern society, which is pretty when it comes to relationships, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% of all marriages end in divorce anyway. They don't make it. You know, if, well, I don't know if anything would damage marriage and damage the institution of marriage is the option of divorce. I don't think gay people and gay people getting married in any way, shape or form changes a bond that you have with your wife. It's just called marriage. It's a human invented thing. If we decide that gay people can get married too, I just don't see how it damages anything. I don't think it tears down the definition of marriage in any way. It just opens up the possibility that people who are gay won't be discriminated against. How hot is that? How hot is that? That's hot. I don't, I don't, I just don't understand. He says why it damages, I don't get why, them gay guys damage you. And I don't really see how it damages anything either, personally. I mean, hold on. No, wrong. Logically, logically, it doesn't make sense, right? That some gay dudes being yoked together, I don't know, in Long Beach, somehow damages me and my wife. But of course, there's a whole entire reality outside of logic, isn't there? Like... Love itself seems anything but logical, just saying. 
Still, logic is important somehow. We should investigate. We New Worlders who love this question. Have you ever noticed if you ask that question, how does someone's gay gay relationship affect you? It, it's like, it's like crash. We all stop and we're like, well, I just know that it's really important to believe in God. We don't know what to say. Oh, my God. It, our head explodes. And so did Matt Walsh's, by the way. Boom. Ba-boom. He super struggles with this in the podcast. You can hear him laboring. I mean, how does it damage me and my wife? That gay marriage or the gay relationship. And the answer is, drumroll, it doesn't. Of course, it doesn't damage me and my wife. Not in the science meaning making kind of way. Not in some linear logical way. I don't, I don't get hurt because gay guys are having whatever sex they're having somewhere. I don't get COVID because a gay dude shares poems and a kiss on the beach with his bearded buddy. Me doing dishes in South Carolina, him doing his friend on the beach in Florida, it doesn't damage me. Me? It's stupid. An old worlder, for good or for bad, like one of my buddies in Mali, for good or for bad, would not even entertain this question. They, I, I'm just telling you, Bakri would be like, how does it damage me? He's just not even going to wrap his head around this. He'd be stuck on this. Why are you calling them married? He'd be stuck on the two dudes being yoked. He'd be wondering if you had, I don't know, lost your mind. Did you fall down and hit your head? Because in the old pre-enlightenment, people did symbolos, not mathematicos. They did symbolos, not mathematicos. Right? The old worlder would be seeing two phalluses or two wombs. And they'd simply be intuiting non-marriage at that point. Now, a new worlder would be like, they hadn't, they hadn't been enlightened to the new knowledge. No. They hadn't been trained to think a certain way, maybe? Possibly. But the world was laid out in front of them as symbolos, a symbol. So would the old world guy, my friend Bakri, or any of these folks that we work with overseas, who are kind of new world these days, but if you really found the old guy on the hill, what would they say? Well, they know what gay sex stuff is. They would know gay lovers doing gay stuff. They would know about this. It's part of every conversation in nearly every society ever, even when it's whispered, guys. But marriage? Like, marriage. Look, even the most educated Greeks of the Golden Age, this is, you know, what is it? 420 BC. Even the most educated Greeks, philosophers, the ones who held the highest form of love as love between a young man and an older man. Socrates, Plato, these guys. Even those guys who held the highest form of love as being male to male, they didn't advocate for gay marriage. It didn't even come up, like at all. It wasn't possible to marry a same-sex lover. In fact, you want to hear the, the dirty down dirty truth and they write about this it would be a dirty thing for the two men to get married because that perfection that rational union of man and man that would be too good for marriage marriage is a dirty thing it's a lower thing i'm telling you look it up no marriage between penises and penises was possible no that kind of marriage became possible on a large scale like right now when marriage becomes about feeling, quote, love, unquote. Yeah. Symbol, symbolos, or representing, representing, iconography, image, these kind of, thi this kind of thinking becomes secondary to what you desire, what you feel. And in that way, well, Joe Rogan is a very new world dude. And in that way, Joe Rogan's just keeping it real.
Let's take a break. Just for a second, because I want to go back to my friend Molly. She's a super supporter. I want to hear from Molly about new ways to assist First Things Foundation. FTF, www.first-things.org. Let's hear from Molly. Maybe you should have puppets on your merch, your merch store. A like puppet. A, like, a, like a puppet. Like you could have like the First Things Foundation uh, field worker puppets. Collect all 12 or you know whatever and like then you could have like past years you know i mean that's those are some goals i mean you could do like every two months and then it could be like a two-year thing and uh plus shipping and handling because don't forget about that but anyway puppets that's my idea double-sided stickers boom puppets boom you could put the stickers on the puppets are the puppets collectibles or, or are we doing videos with puppets? No, you selling? sell the puppets, they're collectibles. I don't Everybody think people wants buy ah, this puppets. is my Oswald. This is my Oswald puppet. He would oh, it's love a puppet that. of the field worker. Yeah, that's are you not listening? Do you have your headpiece in? I said field worker puppets. Oh. Let's do another clip from Joe and Matt. Maybe our last clip. Let's see. Okay, shall we? But then why are you opposed to two gay people doing that? Well, because because again, it's 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 not about choice. It's about what this institution, marriage is an institution, and what is it and what purpose does it serve? And I I, I do not agree with um tearing down or, or or changing this definition, especially because the people who have changed the definition haven't come up with a new one. So they, they say, well, that's not what marriage is. So for thousands of years, we said marriage is the procreative union. And then we had the other side that came along and said, well, it's not that. Okay, well then, like, what is it exactly? You see this? Joe Rogan's like, why are you opposed? What, what, what's gotten a hold of you, Matt Walsh? What's wrong with you? You're so, such a curmudgeon. Why are you opposed to gay people getting fulfillment? And then Walsh is, you see, he moves it toward purpose, which is, which is a good thing to do on some level. But I don't know that he has the right purpose. I don't think he has the truest, most important part of the purpose. Um, in some ways, he's, he's doing math, New World stuff, because he kind of alludes to create stable culture, a more productive human being, a more productive society. It's in society's interest. He keeps going all throughout the podcast. It's about procreation. But I'm here to tell you one thing. If you want to go right down in the middle, the royal path, you want to go to the ancient Eastern Christian, the Orthodox answer, guess what? It's really not about any of those things. In the old world, that is sort of the middle world of orthodoxy, the royal path. It's not even about babies. It's true. Yeah. In old world Christian culture, now, Christian marriage is not about procreation. Christian marriage is like the monastery. Very few people go to the monastery, by the way, to procreate. If they're going there to procreate, they should turn around. It's not going to go very well. A marriage ends often in babies. It is not the point. No. Marriage is an ascetic endeavor. It's the cross. It is the place you go to bury your ego. It is the place you go to die unto self. Now, some of you don't believe me. So let's just clarify. Let's, can we take a second, Andrew? I'm just going to read you a quote from St. John Chrysostom. You ready? Here we go. Marriage does not always lead to childbearing. This is him speaking. Although there is a word from God which says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. St. John Chrysostom, priest of the early 300s, Nicaean Creed type guy, that period, super important. If you go to church in the Eastern tradition, Orthodox tradition, you are hearing his words. He continues, we have witnesses, many of them, 
who are married and childless. So the purpose of chastity takes precedence in marriage, especially when the whole world is filled with our kind. Oh, he's like, we got enough people. There's a lot of humans around. At the beginning, he says, quoting, the, procre the procreation of children was desirable so that each person might leave a memorial of his life. But now, with the resurrection at our gates, oh, resurrection of Christ, we Christians don't speak of death. But we advance toward one another in life better than the present. We desire something better than posterity. In fact, he says, quote, posterity, children, is superfluous. Yeah. He says, it is better, quote, if you give birth by spiritual labor. What? In other words, marriage, you should give birth, go for it, and it's not bad. It's the right place for it. But don't forget your spiritual baby. Don't forget that the baby to be born between you and your wife is called the baby of humility. The humble baby that resides in each of us, married couples. We should strive towards something like death to self. So that's pretty intense. <laughs> so if you have this as the point of marriage, now someone's saying, well, why can't two gay, two gay dudes do that? Okay, we're getting there. But when you have this kind of idea as the point of marriage and lots of other conversations, they don't make sense anymore, right? Joe Rogan talks a lot about his worldview, his religious worldview. He says that marriage is, and he says these words, it's about being committed, it's about being bonded, it's about inheritance, it's about feeling love, it's about fulfillment. All these things are valued by Joe Rogan. Marriage becomes the way by which to get these things. And this is also true, he says, obviously for people who call themselves homosexuals. And he argues this to Matt Walsh. He says, this is him, this is Joe Rogan quoted, why would you cut homosexuals out of these things? And of course it is true for humans who have sexy moments with like-parted humans. Being bonded feels good. Being physically bonded feels good. It's real. But again, remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to talk about old world, new world. Notice the new world chassis. The thing upon which all other things rest for Joe is the person's desire. Right? It's the good for Joe Rogan. And just for this podcast's sake, Let's subtract the O and call it the God. For Joe Rogan, the God is person's desire, a person's desire. A person's desire is the God. And all the myriad ways in which a hum human moves toward their desires, legal and illegal, those ways are their religion. Right? And it's the principles, the binding touchstones by which their body, their worldview, their way of seeing the world is bound together. The new world religion is the worship of human desire. And in some very secular, holy texts, the new world religion is the worship of freedom. And in the old world, this was just not the way of the human. The old world, the old world human, why can't I say this, was first in obedience. Mm. The obedience was to reality, and reality was offered to them by their good or their highest, 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 most important ideal, and that, of course, was the God, the creator. So the creator of the world in all old world societies was the symbol, the actual unified ideal called God. And they know those gods as existing in reality because they see reality all around them. And reality is the good. In that sense. Well, Christians, like other people, claimed their reality to be the reality of all of creation. It may not be true. But that's the milieu in which we operate, right? Right? in the Christian tradition or in the Muslim tradition or whatever tradition you want to call in whatever religion and everyone's got one, 
The mom, the dad, the elders, all of them are types of little goods, little gods, logoi by which the big good, the big God, well, by which the God has fixed a pathway to reality, to living in alignment with how the creator has fashioned the world. In the old world, all humans were subjects. And all humans were subject to their good. Humans were not the object. They could not be the good. They were subject to it. And I don't know how to explain this. This has not changed. The only thing that's changed in 2023 and in the last 300 years is the good. The God. The God is this amalgamated, I don't know what it is. Well, I do know what it is. It's each person's desire. And let me say something about Christian marriage. Could I do that for one second? Orthodox Christian marriage for one second? This is essential, essential to understand. Christ is God. He is the good. And in that way, he is reality. So, hmm, so far that's very old world. But then something crazy happens. The good dies. Yeah, the good, the creator of the world does not demand a sacrifice from his creation. Rather, he sacrifices himself on behalf of his creation. He goes lower than low, like into hell, and there he frees his creation, as in he gives them freedom from death. Not freedom, well, pure freedom resides in the soul to do whatever you'd like, but the freedom offered by God in that case is from death. So as the story goes, the God creator gave his creation freedom from death and in turn, freedom from life too. In other words, freedom to live inside of reality or, or outside of reality. Yikes. The Christian God gave us the freedom to live in hell. So what Matt Walsh is trying to say, but can't because he is a new world-minded man, a good Catholic, is that marriage is in alignment with reality. And to participate in it is to enter into God himself. And every mofo, everywhere, and for all times, I think this is true, guys. Every mofo is trying to do this with their life. We are all, all of us. Old world, new world, dead, alive, all of us, all the time, we're trying to enter into reality because we know it will bring us peace. So, here we go. Will a penis, penis get together, even a committed one, where everyone is in love, will that get the, the, the people into reality? Let's put it another way. Will a penis vagina get together? even a committed one where everyone is in love. Will that get us into reality? Ready? This is important. This is really, really important. Can a gay, quote, marriage get gay folks into reality? The answer is, I think, and I don't know. Again, I talk like I know, I don't know. Offering. The answer is, ready? Here's the answer. Right after. <laughs> right after this important message. You ready? Hi guys, it's John, I'm back. This is a thank you. Starting sometime, I think it was in October, we mentioned that there was a very kind, very kind family foundation that was offering $75,000 if first things could match it by January 1st. We matched it. No, that's wrong. You matched it. You matched it. This is all of us, our field workers on four continents, the three of us who run this vagabond outfit. This is all of us saying to you, thank you. Our Christmas was January 2nd, in some ways, because we got to open up the gift of the match. Thank you. We're gonna work hard because you have made it so. How cool is that? First Things Foundation, www.first-things.org. Always trying to be 
something like a human form of hospitality, offering our every moment to others in very difficult situations so that they might put into action their own plan for a better life. We are, well, we're their consultants and we do it two years at a time and we met our match. Thank you. So, getting back, are you ready? Can a gay marriage, a penis to penis get together, as opposed to a penis vagina get together, can it lead those get together people into reality, into something like union with God? The answer is. Sometimes. Womp, womp, womp. That's boring. Sometimes. That's what I'm going with. You can turn it off right now if you want. It's not sexy, but I do think it's the answer. On some level, there's a mountain. Somewhere on the mountain, on some level on the mountain, two dudes loving each other in a sexual fashion, and them calling it marriage, calling it marriage, on some level, it gets those two dudes into reality. Where there's a sacrifice of those two people, they get something like closer to reality. Where they share joy, they honor their neighbors together. Something like reality is being imbibed. They are participating in it. How could they not be? But that union as marriage that sexual union as marriage can never be a fulfillment of the doorway into reality because the symbol, the icon, well, it's out of line with reality. It's not in alignment with the reality of marriage. It does not line up with creation as per marriage. In other ways, in other words, what the good, the creator, the reality of existence has offered to its creation as marriage, well, it demands proper symbolos. It demands proper union. Proper here being that which is in alignment with reality. A gay couple living in kindness with themselves and their neighbors will find moments of reality in their lives. They will radiate joy at times. They will imbibe it and they will export it. Not unlike how sometimes uh, I create through, I don't know, my relationship with my wife or my relationship with my home, whatever, I create joy for my children when I am joyous, when I'm sacrificial and loving and kind and egoless. And I do all these things even though I am a stubborn, selfish man. Yet somehow, somehow, yeah, somehow, I participate in the reality. But as an icon or image of reality, they can never, people who are married in this way, who call themselves married, they can never radiate and realize reality the same way as a phallus in a womb relationship, a seed in a soil relationship. They can't do it that way because the image is off. They just can't. And it's not because they can't have kids. Don't hear that. It's not about kids. Think of it like this. And I'm just going to switch it out of the Christian milieu for a second. Because I know, lived in the Muslim tradition for a long time. How does a Muslim pray? In submission. Right? You've seen a Muslim bend all the way down, head to ground. By the way, that is a form of prayer borrowed from the Byzantine East, from the early Christian East, by the way. So a Muslim who does their zakat, their prayers, bent all the way down, head to ground, is doing something like alignment. They're submitting, which is a tenet of their faith, in a way that their body is in alignment with their prayer, which is in alignment with their mind, which is in alignment with their faith because they're in this submission, this submissive way of being, this prayer form. But 
a Muslim sitting on a couch smoking hookah and then telling you he is in prayer as he snuffs on his hookah, uh, I don't think that Muslim can claim proper alignment. The form is off. They're not matching their mind to their body, to their soul. Their submission is not imaged in their easy chair puffing a hookah. Are they evil? Hmm. No. They're just not praying. Not fully. Not in that sense. Even though that Fatima, even though she really wants to sit in the couch and smoke her hookah and say her zakat, her prayers. She can. It's just not going to go well. And you could argue it could go very well, but she would not be in the image of submitting. And I think what Matt Walsh is trying to say is that because penis-penis relationships can't symbolos, they can't be united in this form, to call it marriage is to call it by the wrong name. And I think that is right. But here's one last point. Can I do one more point? Uh, that's not the fault of Joe Rogan. Right? This confusion is not the fault of Joe Rogan. It's not the fault of gay dudes. It's not even the fault of Nancy Pelosi. Long before any of these people... <laughs> come on, that was funny. Long before any of these people walked around trying to make meaning, you know, these people being new world, equality, driven, fairness, 20-somethings, before they walked around in their 20s trying to make meaning, people calling themselves Christians abandoned the entire idea of symbolos, an icon, right? The really ancient idea of yin and yang, which is God and man together on some level, united but not right? The same. This idea, this deep idea of God and man as one and still two and hesychism and mysticism, these ideas, they all were got rid of. They were, they were blown up. They were blown up like the monasteries in Northern Europe, in England. You know, all those monasteries got blown up, destroyed, stolen from, thieved. And what was put in the place of hesychism, mysticism, yin, yan, symbolos, icon? Well, utilitarian, utopian Christianity. Utilitarian Christianity tried to bring heaven to earth and make sense of it all because they took in the Enlightenment. See, Christians in this part of the world first introduced marriage as contract. And when they introduced marriage as, as contract into the ancient Christian marriage as icon, well, they paved the way for science as truth. You see, contract replaced icon, science replaced hesychism, and romantic love replaced iconic martyrdom as the prerequisite for understanding marriage. Romantic love became the way we understand marriage because we replaced the ancient understanding of marriage as symbolos with an understanding that it was contract. And I mean, if you believe in romantic love, like that's your totem, that's your good, how the heck would you not check yes on the same-sex marriage concept? I mean, you couldn't even conceive it as a bad thing if you, quote, believe in love. If you believe in love, then you must say, A-OK. -okay. Gay people, A-OK. -okay. If that's your highest thing is the feeling of love, then how are you? I mean, it makes perfect sense. And at the core of the New World Christianity, 
right? Is this new world thinking about the self? I mean, people can get saved on a random Tuesday by themselves within their own heart. Me, myself, and I did that. I accepted Jesus into my heart, eyes and me's. The new world Christianity is about individualism, and I want you to hear this really important thing. Ism, Buddhism, right? Muslimism, the belief in the individual. Individualism is a belief in the individual. And in that way, individualism, Joe Rogan is simply articulating the next phase of what, well, our new world religion of atheism is offering. If atheism is not a belief in Theos, God, the new atheism must be and has become and shall always be a belief in something else. And that something else is the self. Because we humans are going to believe in something, y'all. Sorry. And maybe, just maybe, the birth of something called gay marriage, a hyper, hyper new idea. If it happened at all, it happened once or twice symbolically for land rights in, the, in, in history. Check it out. Very rare. But the birth of gay marriage is something like the laying of the tombstone for New World Christianity. Mm -hmm. The Christianity of the New World is really being marked as over. Especially when New World Christians accept the idea of same-sex marriage. It just tells you that the entire epistemology has shifted. The entire narrative has shifted. Bad or good? Well, for new for, for old world folks, it's 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 hard. I want to say this too. This is for West Africans, East Africans, this is for Georgians, this is for people where we work, Guatemalans for sure. It's not like an angry irritation. It's a confusion. For someone truly dipped this moment, 2023, in this old world type of thinking, it's like, what? They're not into the articulation of anger moment. That's not what happens, guys. Come with us. They're like, what do you, what do you mean? Huh? Now, what will happen is, as this institution of marriage, this new way of seeing it gets pressed upon these cultures, you're going to have some people start to articulate. What? Wait, me? Wait, we should? Wait, my son? And then you're going to get people picking up various forms of, I don't know, weaponry. That's what's going to happen on some level, depending on which new world idea is being introduced. There's no way around it. Because nobody's fighting for against gay marriage. What they're trying to say is, is I can't do this way of thought. I can't do this way of religioning. Your religioning way is really foreign to me. And good news is, is if you talk to truly new world people, people who are to totally, totally, totally embracing the new world voice, technology, hyper-individualism, relativism, they can't get it either. Wait, people get married who don't know each other? Wah, wah, wah. Like that's incomprehensible. The first reaction of a new world is to go, what? What? And then if you look at the people who are really advanced in the way they think, truly advanced new worlders, they've already articulated anger. They don't say, what? They say, oh yeah, perfect example of the patriarchy, attack. And so there's all these levels of knowing. And I guess what I'm trying to say here is we should know the principles upon which rest these cultural ideas. And one way to know them, and well, we've been blessed, is to actually live within cultures that, that just, they bleed so that you might imbibe this, this wisdom. And it goes both ways. Old world to new, new world to old. All right, guys, who loves you? That's it. I don't know. Let me get that off my chest. Jenny's Gagi Marjos, that means to you the victory. That comes from the cable table in Georgia. 
Shenny's Scuggy Mergers. To you, the victory. That's our show for today. Come by our restaurant anytime. If you're interested in joining us in the field, that's a two-year commitment. It is the most badass thing. I'll tell I promise you one thing if you join. We'll get you the things you need, but you also won't have the things you want. And having the things you need, but not having access to some of the things you want, oh my gosh, talk about Talk about a good life. But not until it's over. There's this beauty in it, and I'm inviting you to it. We need you, actually, in 2023. We have four spots opening up during the course of this year. Come check us out, www.first-things.org. Why are we talking about rabbits? Watar is brought to you by the creators of First Things Foundation. Come join us. Oh, in this fall, we're having quite an event in the Florida Keys. More on that to come. If you'd like to advertise on our podcast, get a hold of me. You can find my information at www.first-things.org. I would love to have you advertise for a small fee each month. You can talk to who we talk to. Much love, peace to you, Nakvam dis, hasta luego, kambufo. See you later.